Hola, Robert, what's going on? We are live. It is 7.03-ish, uh, just putting together some last minute information. On the video for tonight, we're going to talk about the video that I posted today, which was the comparison for you five liter Ford guys on all the GT40 variants, basically the tubular GT40 that Ford Racing sells. And we're comparing that to the 93 Cobra and Cobra R Cobra version, the cast aluminum version of the GT40 intake manifold. And then the SN95 version of that same thing with the, with the, you know, dedicated elbow that as part of the intake manifold. And then also the one that we would be more likely to get than all the others, because let's face it, GT40 intake manifolds are no longer cheap dates. <laughs> Cobra ones are probably harder to find. And, and, and the and same thing with the SN95 stuff, since they only made it for two years, and then one year on the Cobra, on the 93 Cobra and Cobra R stuff. So the one that m most people would use now, and the one that I was most um, anxious to test is because I never, I have never run one. I, I had never run the Explorer one. That's the one that we would go get. If we went to the wrecking yard, that's what you're going to find. You're not going to go find a Cobra. You're not going to find a Cobra R. You're not going to find an SN95 Cobra. That's just not going to be sitting there for the taking. And, and if you go buy one from a Cobra owner or aficionado, he's not going to want to sell it because, you know, how else are you going to restore your Cobra and be, and be part of, part of the cool, like, you know, Cobra gang, the Cobra club. Um, so you, you would be less likely to find those things, but very likely to find, I, I, I see explorers still even now, um, even with as many videos as I've done on telling people that if you want a five liter, that that's the one that you should go get. If you're thinking about replacing the five liter, um, because it has GT40 heads, which are probably the best production five liter head. And then it has a GT40 intake, which now we know works very well, especially, and if you have a Fox, you would do that anyway, get rid of that elbow and put a, and actually what these things needed, and, and we can talk about, this is one of the things that we'll talk about tonight, is that, <laughs> and, and you see this especially in comparison to other things now. Back in the day, when you, you know, if you upgraded from a stock throttle body, which I think was 58, up to a 65 millimeter throttle body, that was a big upgrade. You know, you went to the 65 and then, and then later on we got seventies and 75 was like the, all of it thing. And then some of the really big race manifolds had nineties and you know, there was a handful of guys out driving nineties. Now nineties come on, <laughs> come on factory production cars li like it's nothing. And really it is because I remember this was even more prevalent back in the day when people talking about throttle bodies is, oh, the 90, the 90 millimeter throttle body, you know, hurts low speed power. I'm like, no, no, it can't do that. It doesn't do that. It doesn't hurt low speed power. There's not too much airflow going into the motor to stop like torque production. The torque production is going to be a function of other things that come after the throttle body. What normally will happen actually is, is the reverse of that, at least in terms of feel, you're going to feel like when you're opening a big throttle body that all of a sudden you have a lot more torque because the throttle angle and for any given throttle angle, you're going to introduce more airflow. And so it's going to feel more responsive. It's of course not, and it's not making any more power. And if the bigger throttle body were to make more power, let's say a situation where you could utilize that most of those gains from a bigger throttle body are going to come at higher engine speeds because that's what it does. That's where, that's where the motor needs more air and that's where you give it more air and that's where it makes more power and turns all that stuff in. But one thing in this, in this test that all of these intake manifolds could have used was more throttle body. We, I don't think I need to go back and look and see. I don't know if we have, uh, I'm, I'm now thinking, I wish I would have taken vacuum readings and maybe I have some on the, I might have some of those logged on the Holly. I'd have to go back and look. That, that's unfortunately at West Tech. I don't know if I logged that. Um, again, I'll have to take a look at the dyno data and see if we had a vacuum source hooked up. We weren't running boost or anything. A lot of times we don't hook that up on the dyno. We do have that reading, obviously, from the MAP, MAP sensor in the Holly. So if we logged any of the runs from the Holly, then we could maybe have that. But we, we know from this power level that a 65 millimeter throttle body is restricting this. The, these intakes are also, we know that if we put more intake manifold on here, this combination will make more power. In fact, you're going to be seeing exactly that test 
coming up in a in a in a very soon to be released video in the in the very near future. So we'll show you what happens when you put a different induction system on there. It will definitely make more power. Um, so all of these can use bigger ones. And, and we saw this when we, I did a comparison in the video, we ran it on the Explorer manifold and we took away the elbow and 65 millimeter throttle body on the elbow and then put a, the adapter that Kenny Bell sells so that they could run their five liter blower kit that's designed for the Fox chassis. They could run that. They just converted that using this elbow into an SN95 blower kit, basically, because they only made that that body style with that motor for two years. So there's no sense in dedicating a whole new casting and all. I mean, a, a whole new manifold casting and stuff. All they had to do was make this elbow, and it was a you know it was a fairly simple de deal. They they did that in short order, so that, so that the SN95 guys could benefit from the boost from a twin screw supercharger. But we tested that that elbow um, on the Explorer intake and that the opening in that is bigger than 65 millimeters. And so maybe we got some <laughs> extra airflow going in there, but all of these things, as I said, if the, it'd be a little harder to do on the tubular GT40 because of the, there's not a lot of wall thickness in the tube going in. You could obviously taper um, bore the flange that the tube is mounted to on the GT40. And so you would get a tapered entry necking down to whatever the inside diameter of the, of the, of the, what that tube is. The others you can port because they lend themselves more to that. So you could go in and, and, and maybe get something that's 75 millimeters. And I guarantee you that at this power level that we were at on this cammed and ported head 302, that they definitely would have taken advantage of that. Now, it may not have done much in terms of where this thing wanted to make power with these kind of manifolds, because all these manifolds, and I didn't measure them because it would be difficult to do to measure them exact. But if you look at the design of all of them, they're all very comparable. And if you look at the power curves of all of them, again, all very comparable. So I would guess that the intake runner length is, is again, very at least, at least similar, if not maybe <laughs> identical. Um, I'm thinking in looking at the curve and the way that it performed, the Explorer might be either a little longer than the others, or it might be a little bit smaller in cross section than the others. It seemed to be maybe a little bit better down low, but down way low. So that wouldn't surprise me given the application because the Explorer is not concerned about the manifold design team was not concerned about 350 plus horsepower combinations and they were not concerned about 6,000 RPM. They were concerned about the RPM that they're running in the power level that they're running for a stock motor basically. So it wouldn't surprise me if they did that, if they tightened everything up a little bit. Maybe they just made another copy of that and made it fit. That works too. <laughs> but it'd be interesting to, to actually have um, dimensions of all of those so we could I could talk a little bit more intelligently about that, but that's that's the nice thing about the dyno. We put it on there and show and and even if we could talk about oh this one has three percent less cross section or three percent less runner length or eighteen percent more plenum volume or whatever the deal is, it has that. Ultimately, the dyno tells us oh well it didn't seem to care about that. It just it, this is what it wants to do. This is what they all want to do. So none of these manifolds, not any of the of the uppers that were tested because the lower was consistent for all of these, but none of these upper manifolds will ever be a high RPM manifold. They're just not, they have way too much runner length to, to ever be, you know, th these things are not going to go to 6,500 or 7,000 RPM. That's not where they're going to make peak power. The only way to get one of these to make power up there is with a rising boost curve. A centrifugal helps that so you can get a little bit more RPM because as you have a rising boost curve, it tends to you know, increase where the motor is going to make peak power. Same thing with the turbo. You'd have to either size the turbo and the wastegate to make that happen, or you'd have to program that into a electronic boost controller that was um, targeted with engine speed so that you could have it go, oh, I want six pounds, eight pounds, 10 pounds, 12 pounds. I want a centrifugal blower curve basically out of my turbo. And that works too. You can, you can make that happen. And sometimes people want to kill the torque and on a five liter, that might not be a bad idea. Oh, I just went fuzzy here. Come on. There we go. 
So, so you can do that, but but really none of these are, are are designed to do that. They want to just be, you know, in the in the RPM that we were running. Even and, and these were run, and I hope a lot of guys were happy that I ran it with an eCam and not the <laughs> extreme energy cam that I run in everything. Not by choice, but only because that's the camshaft that was left from the last test that I did. So all I did was an intake swap and it made things a lot easier. Um, I, I like all these manifolds. I especially like the way that the the GT40 look. And after I had, I can remember back in the day, having seen that many, 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 many times, you, know, you kind of get tired of everybody buying the GT40. Again, like with the B303, I'd like to know how many GT40 intakes that that Ford Racing sold. It's got to be a bajillion. Um, and then the Cobra comes out, you're like, oh, that looks really cool. It's aluminum. And then you lift it up and you go, oh yeah, the GT41 is still, it's much lighter and, and a better way to go. Although even even way back in the day, you know, we were cutting the plenum and extending them. Stuff. And quite honestly, I I don't know that plenum volume did much. I, I kind of would like, I wish I had the bunch of them that I had from back in the day. I would kind of like to, to test that again and see if the plenum volume does anything, you know, by itself. But we did a lot of work with the guys from Extrude Hone and Extrude Hone ported a lot of these manifolds because that's a really good application for it where you can't get in and, and port it by hand. Then you could just go do this. And, and the other thing that we did a lot when I was doing stuff with uh, Ed and Bob, they're really great guys. The, what they were doing is they could isolate runners because as you know, the ones by the distributor, um, what is that one, one and five there um, they have more twisties and turnies. And so they're, they don't flow as well. So you could get, the, you could equalize the flow if not the change in runner length and the change in direction and other things that are associated with the way that those are designed, but you could equalize flow. And then the theory was that you, you could get them all making the same power. If that's, if that's possible, it didn't make us feel better though, to get the, get all the flow even because it would airflow every port and we would flow test the upper and then the lower and then the upper lower together. And so it was a lot of what I'm saying is it was a lot of flow testing. Um, and then if you get those, the flow numbers way up on the, on the intake manifold, obviously you have to get the flow up feeding those because that's going to be responsible for feeding all of these things. So if you get the flow numbers up on the intake and then if you get the flow numbers up on the intake, you don't want to saddle that with a set of E7 TE heads because then it was all just a big waste of time because it says, oh, that's great. Now you're flowing 300 CFM. I'm flowing 150 or 160. So no, no amount of extra intake flow is really going to do much. But I would like to, to uh, do more testing on ported versions of that. And, and then, like I said, the extending the plenum volume. I haven't really ever seen very much from plenum volume, but I'm always open to test. And one thing that a lot of guys have mentioned and Mark and I, Mark Sanchez and I have talked about this many, many times. In fact, he, before the last time we had our discussion, he had just thrown away the truck intake manifold, which is what people want me to run. That's the intake manifold, at least the lower portion that the Selene guys used. And then the Holly System Axe was a version, I think a lower version of that stuff. So we want to try the truck one. I also want to try the 351 truck one and, and try that and see how well that does versus something else to try to put it in comparison. I'd like to try the 302 one and see how it compares to more so to the factory HO to see if the truck one was actually better than the Mustang manifold. Um, but then also, you know, the, and I, and for you guys that are looking, if you've watched the video that I put up today on the, on the GT40 test, if you want to see how much better a GT40 is or any of these explore or any of these, cause they're all going to be very similar. I have a video up where we ran the stock HO intake manifold and then upgraded to uh, GT40. And we did that on a very mild combination and the gains were still pretty good from the GT40. It did lose a little bit way down low, which we would expect the HO intake manifold is really long and very small. And it's designed to make a lot of torque even more than the GT40 does. Um, but the GT40 did very well and there were some pretty good gains. And if we tested it on a motor like this, the stock manifold would be even more restrictive and then the GT40 would show even more. Although at this kind of power level, this combination could really benefit from like the RPM, the Edelbrock RPM2 or the System X or something like that. And I, and I have tests up on the System X and I know I've tested the RPM2, but I don't know if, we, if I put that test in video format. We'll have to see. So uh, that, stuff, that stuff all worked out very well. I'm excited about doing more Ford testing. I'm going to do more cam testing on the Ford. 
I hopefully uh, the guys from Airflow Research get back to me about maybe doing some enforcer stuff or some 165 tests. Ultimately, I'd like to revisit the 165 test that Carcraft did way back where they made 400 horsepower with the stock camshaft because I, I just have my doubts. Uh, I'd, I'd like to revisit that and see see how close I could get to that, see if that's possible. I need to find out a couple of things because um, there are a couple of very small things that when you add them up, it make a difference. Like, did they have a windage tray in this thing? Did, were they at zero deck? Were they, were, was the piston out of the hole? Was it a flat top? Did it have valve reliefs? You know, and because all of those things are, and what gasket did they use? All those things are going to affect compression. Did they mill the head? What chamber was it? Uh, did they use beehive springs? You know, because all these little things where you're trying to trick it with a couple of horsepower here and a couple of horsepower there, all of that can add up, you know, especially if you get up to you're at 388 and then you get a couple of tricks and now you're in the mid to high 390s and then all of a sudden, you know, think, things are getting very close. So if that's the case, I just want to make sure that we duplicate all of that stuff and, and you know, I, I want to give it a fair shake because if it does it, it does it, then it would be cool. And, you know, and, and even if it doesn't, then. It's not to say that, that they didn't show that. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm excited about trying the enforcer heads too, because like like with the Explorer intake manifold, I've never run enforcer heads. I Back when I did all my testing, all they had was the 165, the 185, the 205, and the 225, I think, that we ran on some of the bigger stuff. And all those worked very well. So I'd like to try these. And obviously there's lots of other, the trip flow 11 R's guys want to see me do a 165 and a 170 11 R comparison. And again, what, what combination do you do that on? Um, so we'll, I've got to set up a poll here. Okay, we all know if you guys haven't seen it in the video that I posted today, I ran the Explorer intake manifold and I ran it with the 90 degree elbow and the throttle body the way that it is in the Explorer. I also removed that 90 degree elbow and bolted the throttle body right onto the Explorer intake manifold. So here's the question, here's the poll today. <laughs> will that Explorer elbow that we know hurt power on the NA motor, will that hurt power under boost? And the poll was up. And we're off and running. Uh, I also took a look at um, some Pontiac stuff today. Uh, let, if anybody out there is interested in, um, there are some wheels and tires for the Pontiac that are 18 inch wheels, 18 by eight. And I think that they have 245 tires on. They're in good shape. Got to make sure. So I don't know if you guys can see that. That's a wheel and tire assembly. The tires are in real good shape. Lots of good rubber on it. That wheel was on a 69 Le Mans. So I don't know what bolt pattern that is. That's probably just, I'm thinking that that's good. Is that the same as a Camaro or does anybody know? Um, also, if anybody's looking for this, <laughs> got, got engine hoist and a transmission jack and various things that she needed to get rid of and get out of her um uh, get out of her garage before she um, moved. So I'm just trying to help her sell that stuff and get her the money and everything. Five on four and a three quarter. Okay. Is that, is that the same as a Chevy? 11 R versus the world. <laughs> and these are 18 by eights. Yeah. And it has a, it has a 245 tire on it. And they're boss wheels. That doesn't mean anything to me, but might mean something to somebody. They are 245-45-18s. So I like whenever I have an opportunity to learn new things. So I was looking at a bunch of Pontiac heads and then going and doing the research to find out what they were originally on, which is kind of cool. So you get to learn about history and, and figure out what, what would be a good combination maybe to test with and stuff. And so all of that's good stuff. The 
The 400 is now back and is over with the car, so that's being pulled out. And he's pulling out a 350 that also, it's a Pontiac 350 with a Turbo 400. That's the other thing I have if anybody's interested. She had, a, we'll just call it a Pontiac Turbo 400 core transmission with a converter. So if anybody's interested in that, <laughs> core price on that with the, with the converter, um, it may be a running, working transmission. I just don't know. So I'm not going to say anything else other than that. She didn't know, and I don't know, and there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no way to know what it is. We do know it's a Turbo 400. We do know it's a BOP Turbo 400. Um, there is a converter there with it, and it was just all wrapped up. So uh, unknown condition, but at least it's a Pontiac 400 core, Pontiac vehicles, Pontiac. So if somebody wants that, like I said, the Turbo 350 or the 350 Pontiac is also has a Turbo 400 behind it. So that's, that's coming out, and hopefully I'll get to do some testing with that. Is it Turbo 400 and a Turbo 375? I've never heard of a Turbo 375. I'd like to see what a phenolic spacer would have done on the five liter test. A phenolic spacer won't do anything to air temperature. The only thing that it will do is it will um, change runner length by whatever the thickness is. And that may or may not have much of a change, a swing in the curve. Jose, I just bought two 245 35 18s for over $700. Yeah, these would be less than that. 2400, seven and a half to one compression if it's a 70s. This is a, this one, this one has the small chamber. The 400 that's going in the car, the one that I ran on the dyno, has um, the small chamber heads on it. It has 69 Ram Air 3, the 62 heads on it, which did not come on that. I don't think came on that particular motor because I don't know. I don't. Maybe the block was a 69. Maybe that was a 69. Turbo 375 is a turbo 400 with a small output shaft. Like to see the five liter truck manifold tested. I think that the truck lower flows well, but. People swap the turbo 375s and when turbo 350s blew up, so you wouldn't have to change the drive shaft. Oh, I see. See, that's why I come here to learn new stuff. <laughs> Put a turbo hydro 425 in. Now we're just throwing numbers out there like crazy. Make it a front wheel drive. Do you have any experience with SVO aluminum small block forward heads? I think they were LMR house brand. I don't know what LMR house brand is. I tested all of the um, aluminum small block forward heads back when they were offered the, the um, GT40, the GT40X. Um, were those the only two? <laughs> You ever thought building a Cleavor? Uh, take a look. There's already a video up on a 408 Cleavor. I come here for the obscure movie references. See what I can do. Scusi, scusi. That's right, Scott. Mr. LS. I do like those chain drive front wheel drive ones. The, was that a Tornado Trans too? Is that the same thing? I think that the Tornado one was what, um, wasn't that the Trans that, they, that Jerry Weigart tried to use to begin with in the Vector? What's the difference between nitromethane and methanol? There's a, they're completely different fuels. 
if you do a nitro water injection like methanol water injection you you don't want to do that nitro methane doesn't work very well with gas it works better with alcohol Well, it's headed 304. It seems like a good idea. There was a um, there was a Pontiac transaxle too. Is the exhaust port on a GT40 P capable of sealing an inch and seven eighths header? If you have a GT40P head, there's no reason to put an inch and seven eighths header on it. The problem you're going to have is the um, the bolt spacing for bolting the head bolting the header on. You have to use the wide dart pattern or the offset trick flow pattern. A guy tried to sell me a 300 head that was made out of Cleveland. As I saw the Cleveland one too, that would be more forward on forward action, which is kind of cool. I know you do need to say hydrate. I've got no hydration here. The SN95 five liter intake was borrowed from the 91 to 93 Thunderbird five liter. I thought that the five, the Thunderbird was just the HO manifold turned around. Yes, in the Tempest, it was basically a power glide connected to a slant four by a torque tube. How did you, how do you, it was a mad villain of the tape thrillers. I don't know, you got me on that one. The slant was the, the Tempest was half the 389. That's the um, trophy four cylinders, what they call it, because the 389 won so many trophies. So the four cylinder version also did. You, you want to see a build of an HT4100 Cadillac V8? How about if I just run the North Star on the Dyno and put boost to it? The Pontiac transaxle was the reason that uh, my cousin Vinny got the uh, what's her what's her name uh, Marissa Tomei got got the kids off. Flow test a big dog's ported GT40 intake. I I honestly don't care as much about the airflow of the of the thing because like I said I've flowed lots of those like I'm sure. I'm sure 20 of them um, ported versions and you, you can get them to flow a lot, but the, my cousin Vinny taught me all about the Tempest. That's right. Um, but I, but I'd like to see them make power. Oh, Robert, that's bad news. Just did a compression test on my 351. 155 was the highest and 30 was the lowest. That's a little bit more swing than we like to see. Pontiac did have a 326, but not, uh, the 194, yeah, was it was half. That's why they call it half of a 39. Big dog porting GT40 flows 365 CFM. That, Again, that's fantastic. If you if you make a tube that flows 365 CFM and it's still 20 inches long, it's still going to want to have a reflected way that makes peak power in this RPM range. How about you test a Pontiac once? Once Tempest engine. The five liter make more power and torque for the dual plane and 600 Holly. Well, we're, we're going to see, aren't we? The gentleman that 
that is doing the install of the 400 Pontiac in that Le Mans also has, we talked about it last night, he has the 348 tri-power that I might get to run, which is, fingers crossed, that would be awesome. He also has a, I think it's a 70, 429 Thunder Jet, <laughs> which is a T-Bird motor. <laughs> Just kidding, but seriously. <laughs> Yeah, the overhead cam Pontiac six cylinder that would be good. Uh, Liv has one of those, and she said something about let me use it. A four twenty nine Cobra Jet. It mounted a Quadra Jet. Yeah, the Cobra Jet did, but the Super Cobra Jet didn't, right? Uh, Jake, I have a serious question. I swear, I see a few other guys mention this. Have you? Have you commonly seen Explorer short block with more cylinder wear on number seven toward the top of the bore? I haven't, but I honestly have never looked for that. So even if it was there, I wouldn't have noticed it. <laughs> this live woman is cool. I've never actually met her. I've only talked to her through... Uh, I don't know if we talked on the phone or not. I can't remember calling. Um, but she pops up in the chats and stuff. Ah, what happened? Let's see how our poll is doing. <laughs> With Explorer Elbow Hurt Power under boost, 54% are saying yes and 46% are saying no. Wow. Just always the split. Super of the Super Cooper Jet drag pack stuff. Uh, Super Cobra Jet was an engine upgrade, also not just the um, not just the trans and stuff. Are the GT forty P heads any good? Yeah, they're a lot better than the E seven T E heads are. They just require a a dedicated header. Nitromethane doesn't work well with gasoline. What's that mean? It means that they don't mix very well. Throwweight stroke or triplo 225, high ports, 70 cc, Mac, long tubes, big dogs, ported GT40 intake. So it's a ported GT40 or a ported Cobra? Because a ported GT40 doesn't really make sense because you can't really port the tubes unless you make big tube versions of that, which would kind of be cool. I do remember seeing one or two of those way, way back that somebody made bigger tube versions of that. Uh, how much more stark in a two bolt 444 handle? I don't know a lot. I'm an HVAC tech, and my world trail was always hurt. Yeah, look at the short turn radius on a cylinder head. Everybody hates those. I had a brand new set given to me. There's still a bubble wrap from the factory. A GT40P head is a good head. It flows like the GT40 does. And it's, like I said, it's a good upgrade from a factory head. It's just not like what an, a TFS 11R, an Airflow 165, or, or a Dart or <laughs> Brodex or <laughs> Edelbrock or the other ones. You can take a look and see. I have um, testing on the I have videos up on running those heads. What are they worth bare and brand new? Not, not a lot. What about the ComCam's intake box? I wanted to try that. I A lot of times when we're doing these tests, I test just whatever we have at hand. And there we did have one of those Hartman slash ComCam's box upper intake manifolds. But unfortunately, the one we have is designed for the factory HO lower. So I couldn't run that on this intake manifold, on this lower intake manifold. I wish I had. They make a version of that, obviously, for the GT40. Downs made there. Lots of people made them. CarTech, I think, did. Lots of people made those. But I've tested the box many, many times, and it just kills the low-speed power. Uh, 
Only cheating circle trackers know about nitropropane or propylene oxide too. Uh, big dogs does support the tubes are upper by stretching the main tube. So are they getting rid of the two um, intake uh, bolts, the supports, the standoffs for those? Because if you get rid of those, then you can widen the tube, obviously, going in. Otherwise, it's hard to, to get anything done. Is propylene oxide, yeah. Yeah, hydrazine is probably not the go to thing. Uh, does cold air intake really make a difference on an 87 and 95 Mustang, or is a 94 and 95 considered a cold air intake? I don't remember what the factory air intake looks like on the 94 and 95. Does it have a, is it grabbing air from the fender wheel? And is it, is it, does it, it doesn't have an air silencer, right? In the fender wheel. You, you just need to grab cold air. You're not going to get ram air from a tube or whatever. All You just want to, you just want air to come to your engine from outside the engine compartment and not from behind the radiator. That doesn't count. It's got to be fender as long as the fender is being fed by air you know, not going through the radiator, going around the radiator. Or from a tube that you put down, you know, Roger Ramjet, Ram Air, um, down, down at one of the headlights or the driving lights or the fender or somewhere. Off subject, is there a relationship between piston speed and knock and does it have anything to do with the latent heat in the cylinder heating the incoming charge air? But that's not but that's not related to piston speed though. Piston speed will can help determine, can help negate that. Because the faster the piston speed, the less chance that has of happening. But it's not, but the piston speed is not creating the detonation. There's a video on YouTube of a guy that expanded the tube in a GT4 using a baseball bat. I mean, when you extrude something, that, that's kind of what they're doing. They're pushing something through there and expanding it out, and, and it does work. Um, I don't know that I would do that to a GT40 intake manifold. I think I'd just do another intake manifold. Even if I wanted to duplicate the GT40, I'd just make big tubes and make a big, big front tube on it. You know, put a three and a half or four inch tube on it and, and really go. But because that's what it needs, it needs a hundred and two millimeter throttle body, right? Dan, I have videos up of the triclo top end stuff, and that does help quite a bit, obviously. But the explorer stuff is also a good option. <laughs> States concerning small butt cords from Richard. That's horse. Well, I don't. Does anybody know if the did the did the SN95 Cobra actually come with a 65 millimeter throttle body? Because that's what I'm trying to find out. I've been told both ways. I've been told that it had the intake manifold, but still had the stock throttle body on it. And I've also been told that the 65 millimeter throttle body had had that. And I've also been told that the 65 millimeter throttle body was only a Ford racing piece. And it was not part of that, not part of that Cobra package. So, so, so it's, been, it's been so long. I don't, I don't remember. The Super Cobra Jet got football rods, yes. Is there any way you can test fuel consumption under load? O only at wide open throttle. It would be different. It would be, it would be interesting to see the difference in efficiency between a Carter and a Quadrajet and an Edelbrock. Uh, only at wide open throttle could we do that, not, not in our cruise, which is where you should be most concerned about fuel consumption. The five other Cobras had 70 millimeter throttle bodies and spacers. The um, the 93 Cobra and Cobra R did not have 70 millimeter throttle bodies. 
uh, go ahead, make my day. The 40 in GT40 is the height of the hood, or, or not the hood, of the roof, because that was the um, minimum height for Le Mans. Is a 512 can too small for a 357? I don't know what. Are you talking about a 512 lift? The lift doesn't tell me anything about the camshaft, really. Yeah, you could do hydraulic pressure. I've seen guys do it. I've seen guys do that with uh, not hydraulic pressure, but actually air pressure on headers. When they damage a set of headers, there was a set. I think that they had Inconel headers. They were really, really expensive. They were custom set done for a BMW race engine, and they were damaged in a crash. And so what they did was make plates for both sides of a header and then made a chuck for air pressure and then heated them up and then pressurized them and popped them back into place. It was really, really cool. I said, that's a lot of work. And he said, no, building new ink and now headers is, <laughs> is a lot of work and a lot of money. At lower RPM, there's more time for incoming charge to absorb heat. Actually, at lower engine speeds, there's more time for the charge air to get colder from the fuel. 40 inches high, that's what I'm talking about. It was the, the roof, the top of the roof couldn't be more than 40 inches. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dan Gurney's had the Gurney bubble. The, the GT40 heads are not named after anything other than the old GT40, it, it being a cool name that references a time when Ford was dominating in road racing. You could also, instead of going with a GT40, I take for your five liter, you could use a Coyote engine. Yeah. I could. I could also just go and grab the biggest stack of $100 bills that I could ever imagine and then just light them on fire. I do like coyotes, but they are a lot more expensive than, than a GT40 and take maples. <laughs> what about the use of two oil catch cans on the Mustang? I, do you already have one? Portable gurney bubble. Freeze gun and zerk fitting, that works. Yeah, the, the GT40 heads are named after the race car. We did run, I may have missed it, but I believe you ran 80 pound injectors on your test. Yeah, as a reason for such a large injector on an NA test. It doesn't make any effort. We could run 280 pound injectors on there. It wouldn't make any difference as long as they would meter down low enough um, because we're determining how much fuel we give. So stop thinking that it's an 80 pound injector and then that's too big because we're, we're only giving 25% 25, 25 of that 80 pound injector and we have all this left in reserve. The reason that I put those in was just because that, again, that's what we had laying around. Um, 24 pound injectors or 30s or 36s or 50s or whatever, those will all work, but none of them will work any better because the ones that we use gave it enough fuel and gave us the right air fuel. And the other thing that's more important is that now, if we want to, we have room to grow if we want to add boost or we want to run E85 and E85 and boost and all that stuff. 87 or 88 was the first forged piston uh, in the five liter. And 88 was first year of the Mass Air in California only. They had some ink and L headers. Yeah, they were, these were light. This was um, the guys from OSCO, uh, Dennis and Randy, um, and they were racing a BMW. Does the inch spacer on a GT40 intake make a difference on the dyno? like a one inch phenolic spacer in between the upper and lower that should change the runner length a little bit to we should see something that's not going to be a lot what it's going to do is add more low speed power
Casey, I think the copyright for GT40 was running out and they wanted to use it. Same thing with the Cobra on the 93. That's a good reason. Yeah, my AC is working. The AC in the truck works already. But thank you. Was the largest valve size on factory put in a 351 Windsor? N not, I mean, are you including big blocks in that? Even if you're just including small blocks, the 351 Cleveland's way bigger than that. And the Boss is also bigger. Richard, Matt says you're dumb because she has <laughs> probably had gaskets on the Big Bang motors. I don't know who Matt is. But he's probably right. Because we blew head gaskets. Not. And on one of them, on the last one, we actually had LS9 head gaskets. So there, Matt, take that. They, Ford didn't have a bigger than 184 valve in any of the early Windsors. For some strange reason, I seem to know far too much. Um, Casey, why do we need AC in California? You know that in California, it has the hottest place in the country, right? You, you got that? You're good? You good? We cool? <laughs> and we all don't live in Malibu. That's right. I don't live in Malibu. Hottest place in the country, right here in California. It's called Death Valley for good reason. Yeah, that's my hand. That's my hand. That's my hand. There's my face. I need to adjust my thing here. I thought that there were 194s or something. <laughs> yes, we do have Death Valley. And they have Roadrunners and Sidewinders. Hundred and four in Texas. That's good, except that's sweater weather in Death Valley. That's what we call winter. GM L seventy seven six liter with an LSA supercharger and aftermarket cam ninety three octane tune stock bottom end, including factory ring gap. Up to what? Nope. I'm not going to tell you a boost level. Sorry, that's on you. Put ring gap in it. What I would like to see, because um, there's no number, there's no there's no boost number that's going to give you the right answer that you're looking for. You're thinking that, oh, 10 pounds is okay, or 15 pounds is okay. It may or may not be. There's no, there's no way to tell. It's not a boost number. Um, but what would be interesting is I'd like to see what the factory ring gap is on an LSA, or on an LS9, or on an LT4, or on an LT5, and see what they're doing. <laughs> I don't think Death Valley is the hottest place on earth, though. It might be. Yeah, Dan, I saw that. I live in southern Nevada. It's only a few degrees cooler. It's a lot cooler there. It's all, it's all desert. It's all hot. <laughs> I've been in Nevada. It's hot. Buck 13, and I was out in wrecking yards pulling big blocks. I don't recommend it. But it did train me for having to drive my truck with no AC up through the 108 degree heat in, in central California. So I was primed. I was like, this is nothing. I pulled big blocks in heat like this. Those 351 heads I heard warp like a jagged from the 80s. 351 Windsor heads? Yeah, cast iron don't. The only set of cast iron heads I ever saw that would work were the guy was running a 225 shot of nitrous on it. Do boat engines build more clearance between the bore and the pistons? They might start out with more piston to bore. They might piss at a wall clearance um, because they're going to be loading them for a long time. <laughs> but it's the dry heat. It, that's right, it is. Here we 
there's never a factory performance inline small block forward head in Cleveland is the only performance platform. The I, I thought that the, the 69 351 Windsor were always the ones that everybody wanted. It's in the 80s here in Texas, at least down south. Fun fact, 351 lower truck intake port match to a five liter truck upper. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Hypo 289, that's not really a very good head either. Will multiple blow up valves keep approach charger charge pipes cooler during cruise? Uh, only if you're having heat build up and your and your um, your blow off valves are not able to alleviate that charge pressure. But what's going to happen is m more likely than not, if you're if the if all of this stuff is under the hood anyway, and your charge pipe is hot, it's it's not from compression on the inside. It's from ambient heat from the engine compartment heating up the pipe it's probably not from the air inside in fact if anything the air inside is probably cooling it colton i'm building a 9350 small block looking for 350 wheel horsepower that's going to be good and require good heads and a, and a pretty good size cam uh, Holly EFI versus 650 Holly. Honestly, I would put a carburetor on it before I would put any of those throttle body Holly things. Port injection, I, I I could get with, but not one of the throttle body injections. That's just not my jams. Yeah, the hypo heads were not good. A hypo head is like a probably flows like a, a A7TE head. 288 degrees of duration, 512 lift, too small for a 347. It, it's 288 advertised. So no, that's fine. That's that's a good size cam. That's a step and a half to two steps up from the 274 cam that we normally run. Although I'm a little concerned about that duration and that low a lift, because that's gonna be um well, now nah, it'll still be, now nah, I guess that will be, um, I was thinking the reverse. It will be, um, that will be stable. That will be fine. Yeah, Kuwait has, <laughs> I used to get um, uh, temperature updates from my buddy when he lived back there, over there. And um, it was hot, like, like hot. And he said that the he said that thermometers that that everybody had would only go to 125, it's because after that it just it does it's not hotter than 125. Uh, the 173 ratio is stock for Cleveland. Yeah, carburetors, they're going to work good. It's easy to tune. All that's great. It's consistent. It's going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Phoenix gets hot. You know, there's there's lots of places. Kurt, if you're going to... if. Going to go a uh, stock cheap head on a small upward like run a two barrel Cleveland. Yep. Like see different map readings for the different throttle body sizes. That would be interesting. If we had a motor that could take advantage of bigger throttle bodies, it would be interesting to see how much they would be restrictive. Like we did with the two barrel and the four barrel um, on the 400. It, it, <laughs> it was ridiculous. if I bolt a set of T1 Brodix heads onto a stock 350. If you still have a stock intake and a stock camshaft, the heads are not going to gain that much. If they're if they're a smaller chamber, you're going to get compression, you'll gain something from that, but you're not going to take advantage of what those heads have to offer. It's 
Scott, what's going on? Thank you very much. Oh, Lemon Drop Fun. That, that's nice. Lisa, thanks you already. <clears throat> oh, out in D.C., yeah, it's hot out there. That's the thing. It did, sometimes hot spills happen everywhere, and it just, it's, you know, everybody arguing about what, who's hotter, who's colder, who's taller, or whatever. It's silly. Scott, thanks, man. Yeah, it's getting close. Got four more minutes. What's going on with our poll here? Will the Explorer Elbow hurt power under boost? 52% saying yes. 48% saying no. It gets windy in South Florida hurricanes. It's pretty windy. I was in Hurricane Irene. We, were, our family was in. Um, we were in the Bahamas when it went through, and it went through at a Category Four where we were, which is, which is pretty spicy. And then it was only one when it finally made landfall. Twenty-one miles per gallon at sixty-five miles an hour with a four-ten gear with a three-speed automatic and a power wagon. That seems like a lot. Hundred and eleven in Furnace Creek. That's pretty. That's that's pretty hot. What is the um? What is the one out in Death Valley? Stovepipe Wells. <laughs> Anytime you're named after fire stuff, then you know. Go slower to get better mileage. That's true. Terry, you got to get up at 4 a.m., man. I feel for you. That's early. You know what they say, he who hoots with the owls at night cannot soar with the eagles in the morning. So you're an eagle. Yeah, hurricanes are not, that's that's not good. Oh, 0400, yep, that's not bueno. Not muy bueno. Carson, you're, you got the good job then, man. You're getting paid to watch the stream. <laughs> that universal AC cert. I can legally recharge anything. Wow. Look at tan. Twin Garrett GT35s on a 4.2 liter V8 should be good for 1,000 wheel horsepower. Yeah. Yeah, six, twelve. Yeah, if it's a stick and it's really efficient and stuff. Wait to the party stock two for GT40 for supported stock Fox body intake on a 302 with basic bolt-ons. Are you asking how much power it will make? Lucky for you, Omar, there's a video up that shows what happens when you run the stock intake manifold and then put on a GT40. And the and and at the time that I did it, if I remember right, I think it only had headers on it. Night shift operator. <laughs> Great movie. Quick, call Sarkis. <laughs> Wait, we feed the tuna mayonnaise. Quick, call Sarkis. Awesome. Please land. This bill reminding Chuck to shut up. It's sad that that antique diesel rabbit got the best mileage of any American car. It was overweight, underpowered, and not aerodynamic, but still would get 60 miles per gallon on a freeway. Was it the oh the diesel one? That was better than the um was that better than the the XFI?
ever mess with any diesels. I had an 08 Cummins turbo diesel, a 3500. We did stuff on the chassis dyno, but not on the engine dyno. The diesel Chevette, yeah, that would be good. Was Elvis good? You know what was good was the, the new Top Gun movie's really good. Wapa Valley is the hottest place, 123 degrees. That's pretty spicy. <laughs> okay, I got to get going, so we'll close up. But I got one hot story for you. 51, see, we're split. We're almost 50 50. 51% 50, saying that boost will hurt power, and 49% saying no. So we'll end it there. Um, I was, we were driving to a race, and we had to drive through uh, Needles, which is I think on Highway 40 between going from California into Arizona, just it's all hot down there. It's just miserable. And it was, a, it said the thermometer said it was 122. So the truck was overheating. Um, the, the fuel was vapor locked. We had all kinds of problems. So we stopped and we were going to get something to eat. And it was so hot that we're, we're walking across the asphalt and her shoes are like sticking to the asphalt. And we walk into the Carl's Jr. or wherever we're at. I'm sitting in a line with my buddy Bernie, who is the crew chief guy, um, uh, awesome guy. And we're sitting there and we're like, dude, it's seriously hot. <laughs> and the guy right in front of us just never missed a beat. He turned around and said, man, you should have been here yesterday. <laughs> like, what was it, 300 yesterday? <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Local guy, you know. <laughs> First liar doesn't stand a chance. No matter how hot it is, somebody else has got a hotter one. Yeah. Joe, I, I'm not John Forrest. He's super cool. <laughs> I'm less than that. Richard, what's up? Yeah, no, Arizona, is, that, that's serious. The Slant 6 Hyper Pack intake is the best looking intake manifold. I have an intake manifold for the Slant 6. I need to test it. Our 63 Impala overheat. That's where cars go to die. I'm, I'm pretty convinced. Although, I have to say, driving back when we were coming back, because I think we went to... I want to say we went to Road Atlanta or Lime Rock or somewhere back there, and we were coming back with the truck. It was a 77 Dually with a Turbo 400 on it, and we were towing our race trailer and stuff. We were driving back, and we lost the trans. And to give you an idea how hot the trans was, we were throwing – we had a cup of water, basically. We were throwing cups of water at the um, transmission cooler, and it was just flashing to vapor. <laughs> That's how hot it was. I think we melted the internals of the transmission. Yeah, it, task bar says 72. Yeah, right now it's um what, what I was looking before. It was it was oh, it says 68 right now. It's, is it still sunny outside? Oh, it's good. It's nice. It was nice today. <laughs> it would be nice to see a GT40 heads tubular intake on a 351 ones with an Anderson cam. Let me guess, is that your combination? <laughs> Uh, Liz Planet Inline 6 needs to get tested. Yeah, so, Liv, where are you at? Come on. Yeah, it's been it's been cool at night, Dan. It's been it's been pretty good. Okay, guys, I gotta get going. Thank you all for showing up. Please go watch the video I put up, all the five liter Ford guys, Pontiac stuff inbound, and I will see you guys all tomorrow. And we're dancing. We're dancing.